Wow, what a game and what storylines. The Edmonton Oilers in oil country punish and destroy the Calgary Flames. Taking a 2-1 series lead line one for Edmonton on fire. Evander Kane, a hat trick in six minutes. Wow, the Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl show. Mike Smith on fire, doesn't get the shutout too bad. And He's on fire. Markstrom stinks. Wow. Ugh. The Calgary goalie better find his form and he better find it fast or the Calgary Flames are going to be packing their bags early in this one. This guy's got between a 4 and a 5.5 goals against average per game. That will not get it done in the playoffs. Darth Vladder ends up coming in and hey, it's not going to save much of the day at that point. So let's go ahead. Let's talk about Edmondson's rush attempts. Let's talk about Evander Kane's Hattie. Let's talk about Milan Lucic running Mike Smith. Let's talk about Mike Smith's greatness. Let's talk about the shallowness that is the Oilers roster because heavy, heavy dose of the top six again and find out and stay tuned to think if I think the Oilers can keep up with this by running such heavy minutes to their top six so let's go ahead let's talk about it first things first let's talk about markstrom look anybody who's going to sit out there and say this isn't markstrom's fault um no it's the calgary flames fault as a whole but the goaltender has done nothing to help his team absolutely nothing in no semblance of a reasonable world whether you're a calgary flames fan an oilers fan or an outside hockey observer can you sit here and say with a straight face that Jer jacob markstrom has been anything but horrendous in this series for the Flames. I understand it's Connor McDavid. I understand it's Leon Dreisaitl. I get the top six of the Edmonton Oilers are fast. They're deadly. But Markstrom was supposed to be an elite goaltender. He's shown it all year against everybody but Edmonton that can go ahead and be the missing cog and piece there for the Calgary Flames. He boasts one of the best defensemen in front of him in Noah Hannafin. He has a top six D in front of him that are strong. He has a team that is one of the best in the West at keeping his Corsi and shots against low. And here we are. This is the first game where I'd say he truly got absolutely lambasted in shots in the first period. He did great, but just like the analogy I've used before, the hammer hitting against the dam, eventually the floodgates open and the floodgates are named Evander Kane. Dan Vlader comes in, plays about 19 minutes in this game, right in the third period. Big start for Vlader. Darth Vlader is just... <laughs> He's not going to carry the series, I don't think. I mean, I've seen crazier things happen, but this is the first time that Daryl Sutter has decided to go to Vlader, and it's just one of those, I don't know what magic Sutter can pull out of the hat if the goalie's going to play this way. As a coach, I can tell you, if your goalie's going to play this way, you're doomed. You're doomed. There's not much you can do. So Markstrom better get his head straight and he better get his head straight quick because the Flames are going to need him to step back up and play this game. Last game, we talked about the fact that the Edmonton Oilers are playing heavy in the top six and the comments came back. How can you tell us there's no depth? Uh, because your coach isn't playing them. I'm not telling you. Jay Woodcroft is telling you. That's it. That's the answer. The first line for the Oilers, dominant. Again, you can go ahead. You can take a look at the ice time here. Just go ahead and look at the forwards here. Zach Hyman ends up getting the most amount of ice. Leon Dreisaitl, second most amount of ice. Connor McDavid, load managed at the end. Give the kid a rest. Why wouldn't you? Evander Kane, following that up, it's a whole bunch of defensemen. And then you get a healthy dose of Ryan McLeod and Kaylor Yamamoto. But that only comes around after the game is out of control and for nothing. And why wouldn't you do it if you're Jay Rudcroft? There's a lot of people out there who are saying that you need to have the depth to win in the Stanley Cup Finals. No, you need health in your top six. I take a lot of flack for saying the fourth line for some teams doesn't matter. The third line for some teams, I mean, the Oilers are at least proving it, just needs to be serviceable because their top six is so deadly. So the Kane, Dreisaitl, McDavid line gets it done. Zach Hyman, excellent game again. Hyman was a revelation for the Oilers when he signed, but I mean, he was no mystery. He was no sleeper pick. He's a $5.5 million player, top line player from Toronto. He's a top six deserved player. No surprise, no shock there. Nugent Hopkins, ends up playing with him and Jesse Pugliarvi, the fourth overall pick. This is a top six if I've ever seen. It might be the best top six in the West right now. The Avs may have something to say about that as well too. The first line for the Calgary Flames, good first line. Maybe been the best first line in the West all season, but this isn't the season. This is the playoffs and Goudreau, Kachuk, and Lindholm are having their lunch eaten by Connor McDavid in the top six of the Edmonton Oilers. And you can see that with the five-on-five five play as well. The Kane, Dreisaitl, McDavid getting heavy minutes on the ice, followed by the Nugent Hopkins line. And then it falls off a little bit of a cliff here for these other guys. And, and again, it's just, it's going to make sense. That's the way I would run this team as well too. Woodcroft, he ain't playing around. 
And what's going on with the Calgary Flames? They're not unable to generate the shots and the Corsi that they should be generating, and that's because they're on their heels. The Edmonton Oilers are killing them with speed in the transition zone. Speed isn't just how fast you move your feet. It's how fast you move the puck. It's how fast you think the game in the top six for the Oilers are feasting on the top nine of the Calgary Flames. They have no answer for them. The defense has no answer for them. The offense has no answer for them. Evander Kane's hat trick, as beautiful as it was, those were silky, smooth, incredible passes made by Kane and Dreisaitl over there to Evander Kane. So nice finish by Kane. Lovely finish. That's what you want. He's going to be thrilled to have a hat trick there. It's going to shut up a lot of the haters. I'm a Kane hater. You know it. Never backing down on it. Like the Oilers, though. Just because I don't like Kane doesn't mean I don't like the Oilers. Just because I don't like Nazem Kadri doesn't mean I don't like the Avs. Look, you got to separate man from team. I can separate man from team. Can you separate coach from team? Up to you. The only reason this game ends up taking or looking close on the box score is because Edmonton really takes their foot off the gas in the third, and there's no reason not to. They're just trying to get out of it injury-free. They're already up. By this time, it's 4 nothing. The dam ends up breaking 21 shots in the first dominant, dominant second period. The first 40 minutes were all Oilers all day. You go ahead, you take a look at where their shots are coming from. All dangerous opportunities or tips and deflections up top. Calgary, nothing super dangerous here. Nothing crazy to write home about. And most of these shots are concentrated thanks to the third period of late push where they ended up getting a goal and breaking the Mike Smith shutout. And before we talk about Luch running Mike Smith, let's go ahead and give Coach Ryan D a big thumbs up over on the right. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and join our Discord. That was a spicy one today. They were flying off the handle in there. It was all good fun. It was pretty chill. I had to boot a guy. Oh, well, don't act like a baby. Anyways, we also have our awesome members page down below. So if you want to go ahead and get preferential treatment, support the channel, have videos made for you and receive shout outs, check out our membership tab down below with the join button. Just like these beauties right here, we have one in the executive suites, a tasty snack. We have some amazing lower bowl candidates who are all over our live stream today. Thank you for being there. And always a big shout out to our upper bowl people as well, too. And finally, if membership isn't your bag, think about giving us a super thanks down below for all the hard work. Now let's go ahead. Let's talk about Luch. Let's talk about goalies and let's break down some goals. If you don't get it by now, I don't like people touching goalies. So I think this makes a lot of sense. The Edmonton Oilers respawns here. Look, Luchik ends up going into him. Did he toe pick? Did he push him? No, he just finishes the check. Ba Boom. Bam. Hits Smith into the boards. Absolute dirty play. Look, I love Luchik. I, really, I do. I don't think of Luchik in the same vein as I do guys like Kadri, Kane, Matt Cook, or Rafi Torres. But this is a dirty play anyway. you splice it. It's a carnival run. Right after this one, you can see the fisticuffs end up flying as they should. It's just pushing, shoving, straight chaos at this point in time. I do not know what Luchik is thinking at this point. That's just, that's crazy. That's banana sandwich. There was no reason to do it. No reason to run him. There's frustration, but just a bonehead play by a fourth line player at that point in time. He's used his brain better than that. I believe it. So like I said, I don't hate Luchik. I'm not going to put him in my doghouse for that. Oiler fans definitely are. And when this happens to you, you hate it. The world is ending. We want justice for Smith and justice for Bennington. And when it doesn't happen to you or you're the guy on the other team, you think, ah, it's pretty soft. It's no big deal. Normal emotions of hockey. That's the way it goes. So no matter what people say, unless I agree with you, you're not going to support me. And if I do agree with you, you will support me on that one. So dirty play. Great response by the Oilers. Smith had an awesome game today. When we're on the top of the roller coaster with Smith, He's unstoppable. Like I said, he was a Canadian all-star because he ended up making Team Canada. But when we're on the bottom of the roller coaster and Edmonton fans, the bottom is coming. There will be bottom games. Don't be delusional in this point. It's up and then it's down. The question is, when are we going to go down? He had a hot April. He had a lot of downs in a couple of those playoff games, especially against L.A., and now he's back up. So the stonks for Smith are up. That's what you want. Maybe the confidence will remain. Edmonton, Calgary, let me know. Who do you think is taking game four? Hyman from Dreisaitl and McDavid. The speed leaving the zone, it's real. Leon Dreisaitl may be on one leg, but he is not showing any signs like he did in game one of wincing. Just beautiful fast break. Calgary cannot handle this speed. There is no way. What Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl are able to do at speed is nothing but magical at this point. Look at that 
that no look pass from McDavid. He's still looking at Markstrom straight in the eye saying, we got you here, big boy. No chance. Moves over perfectly to Dreisaitl, who ends up redirecting his stick in a very difficult position here along the ice, bumping it out to Zach Hyman. And this is why I say this is the Dreisaitl and McDavid show. The finisher is important, but you don't get that finish. You don't get the opportunity to finish without McDavid and Dreisaitl, without that speed, without that north south transition that the first line provides of Edmonton snipe show there by Hyman it is one nothing Edmonton this happens thanks to the beauty that is McDavid dry settle and the Edmonton Oilers speed on line one and yes we know Hyman's on line two they caught him in a bit of a change no big deal Worth pointing out as well here too, Markstrom is making a post-to-post save. Again, I can't blame the goalie on this one. This puck has eyes. Look at this. This is post and in. It's just a beautiful shot there from Hyman. The guy can really shoot. He's making his money's worth here. This isn't the fault of Markstrom by any means, but again, we're talking goal counts. Four goals, that's too many. Absolutely terrible zone entry here by Calgary. What a useless blind dump pass. Look, there's nobody there. We talk about this all the time in hockey. You don't want to be pushing pucks back. You want to leave pucks. It's called a drop pass. A drop pass means you leave the puck and start skating. You don't push it backwards. And the reason you don't push it backwards is because you end up pushing it past a player and a guy like Evander Kane ends up torching you for it. So you don't want to try to make back passes well moving. Kane picks it up. He is gonzos here. Change by Calgary. They have to change. Unable to get off the bench at the right time. This should be a safe change. Look, you're just entering the zone. Nothing to worry about here. Ends up headmanning it over to Connor McDavid. And what's he going to do? He's just going to put his head down and drive the mid lane. And this is the correct play. Don't get fancy. Just drive the mid lane. Why wouldn't you? Connor McDavid will go ahead and control and change the speed here. And as he ends up putting in, you don't know who you're going to take. Are you going to take Kane or McDavid? People might be saying it's easy you take McDavid, but you can't. When a guy ends up driving the mid lane here like Kane does, good change of speed. Stop skating hard to make sure he doesn't skate past the net. Hate the laydown. Always hate the laydown. It's a two-on-two, buddy. Stand up. Why do I hate the laydown? Skill is just going to walk around you every day. You're out of the play. It becomes a three on O, technically a two on O at this point because you're laying down. It's just such a terrible choice. I don't like it. It's home run play. McDavid's too good. Passes it over to Evander Kane here and Evander Kane goes from the forehand to the backhand as Markstrom is pushing post to post. Again, what is Markstrom supposed to do on this one? Not much. Not much. Most goalies would end up getting burnt by that. That's an A plus scoring chance. But again, four goals and a goals against average of 4.75 in the series. You from their own zone again, dry side out to McDavid to Kane. This is getting old. This is on repeat, and the Oiler fans love the song. Play it again. Dry Sidle ends up waiting. This is very important. This is what makes Dry Sidle such a good player. We're gonna go back and take a look at it. Look at all the space Dry Sidle has, and he takes his space. We talk about defensemen doing this. He takes two players with him because look, this is just a bad forecheck. You don't want to do this. If you can see his chest and his eyes, you don't want to take straight lines at him. It's a terrible idea. All He's got to do is walk around you skill will walk around you at all times so as soon as that gap closes you end up moving it up the wall what he should have been doing is backing up getting ready to play this player here on the wall but he doesn't do it terrible defense that's not daryl sutter defense he is not coaching that i promise you dry Seidel ends up moving it up the wall that's just skill using their brain amazing job and look here is another pinch and why does he pinch it's because he saw his back when you see a back you're going to pinch it's backs and baubles is when you want to put pressure on the problem is, is this shouldn't have been when the pressure should have been. Calgary should have been backing out of their zone and using both of their players here to seal it off. They don't do that. That ends up costing them the goal. McDavid's way too strong on his skates. He's going to end up rolling off. This is unbelievable that Kane stays on side. Look what McDavid is doing with that puck. That's <laughs> gross. Like, what do you want me to do? There, there's nothing I could say about that other than the fact that that is just the grossest thing. Connor McDavid is sick. Let's see it in full speed here. Gone. And he stays on side. The guy stays on side. He's a freak show. He's unbelievable. Connor McDavid ends up carrying it in on a two on one. Everybody has gotten hyper aggressive here. Evander Kane, smart play again. Just go to the net. Let the best player in the world feed you. Let those points go up. Let them increase. Kane's a good finisher in his own right. But Connor McDavid, look, makes it happen. Nothing but a desperation play. Easy tap in. Is that on Markstrom? Again, it's across the Royal Road. It's a difficult save to save. So no, it isn't on Markstrom. But once again, say it with me. Four goals. Too many. 
Calgary's got to give the goalie some help, but I mean, in previous games, the fact that they ended up putting in so many against them, it is getting really hard to give Markstrom any benefit of the doubt, regardless of how difficult it is. You need your goalie to steal a couple saves here. They just have to do it. I get he had an incredible first period and the dam broke, but Calgary ain't going to be able to do it unless they can play some Team D and find a way to handle McJesus. Calgary does their best Edmonton impression here with a beautiful stretch pass by Anderson after Edmonton shoots it high and wide. Like we said, every time you go high and wide, it's going to be a goal. So the fact that Smitty is able to stop this here is incredible. Best player on the team in on a breakaway and Smitty absolutely stones him. What I love about Mike Smith here is look how far out he came out of his crease. Look at the confidence of Smith challenging. He's out. He's cut off that angle. There's nowhere to go. If I'm Gaudreau, he's thinking shot all day, but I'm actually going to walk it wide and then I'm going to go looking for my player here on the right hand side. Gaudreau doesn't do that. He ends up wanting to shoot. Smitty anticipates the shot. And because he's able to take that angle, just too easy of a save for a goalie in the NHL. Great job by Mike Smith there. Love the confidence. Darnell Nurse on the back check. I don't know. If I was Johnny Gaudreau, I would have taken that one wide, looked for a partner. The play's not done, though, because the brilliance of Mike Smith, I mean, he should have had that rebound, but he ends up snagging it with a glove. Sometimes Smitty lets out some bad rebounds there. Kachuk ends up almost banging it in. But no, Mike Smith is there. It's in his glove. I thought initially maybe it might have hit the pad and it might have snuck in, but it's not. It's safely under Mike Smith there. Rebound control important on that one. Great stop on a breakaway. Kachuk going to the net. And then we get a little bit of the carnival ride in front of the net. Go ahead, pull him off, face wash him, do what you got to do. All the meanwhile, Matthew Kachuk still has, <laughs> he's still got his mouth guard out of his mouth. What a beauty. Stop me before if you've seen this ride, if you've been on it, Dreisaitl and McDavid leaving their own zone. This is all we're talking about. Story old as time. Leave your own zone, score a goal. That's the Edmonton Oilers on transition. And look who's just above my big head. Is that a Vander Kane? You bet your butt it is. McDavid doing McDavid things with an incredible, incredible speed in order to hit the line. He ends up quickly feeding a Vander Kane here. No time to lay down. No time to go ahead and cover that one up. Kane pulls it right back to the backhand. Same story. Same result. A Vander Kane goal. Connor McDavid absolutely torching the Calgary Flames here. Look, I know Kane scored all those. I know Hyman scored one, but this was Dreisaitl and McDavid all day, every day. If you got them in their pool, you've got to love them. The fact they're able to transition from their own zone and score like this, it's difficult on a goalie. It's difficult on Calgary, everybody, but Calgary had no zone possession. They had no offense to speak of. They really didn't have anything in this one. Calgary fans are going to feel pretty dejected after this one, and it's hard not to feel that way. You've got McDavid and Dreisaitl willing their force. They're, they're, they're just a force on the Calgary Flames. It is all will. It is all skill. They have decided they want to win this series for their team. They got a 2-1 win. The Calgary Flames are going to have to remember who they are. Daryl Sutter is going to have to kick them in the butt and get them to remember who they are. It's not that Edmonton doesn't deserve this win. It's that Calgary needs to give their head a shake. This is an embarrassing effort by the Flames. This is garbage can kicking inducing just problems if you're the coach with Daryl Sutter. It makes you want to close your eyes, pull up shop, and run away. They are going to have a very difficult chance in Oiler Nation for Game 4. That crowd is going to be going ballistic. The Oilers' top line is going to be going ballistic. If Calgary can't find a way to slow down McDavid and Settle, they're going to lose. And I've said before, how do you stop them? You can't. Well, I mean, you can. Just ask Neil Pionk from the Winnipeg Jets. You can end up slowing these guys down. But right now, McDavid looks like a man on a mission. It looks like he is here to win it all. Thanks for being here. Albertans, Berta. Love that Berta beef, too. We'll catch you in game four, Flames and Oilers fans.